Welcome back. AP Stats notes here from Stats Medic. I'm Mr. Hayes, and thanks for joining us. So let's talk about two A tables and Venn diagrams. So here's the basics of this. So we remember here the A and B are our two events. A and B mean that that event happens. A complement and C complement means that that event doesn't happen. And so I'm going to connect these numbers over here to this Venn diagram over here. So one, when things both happen, that would mean that you're in this intersection here. I'm not sure how well that purple is showing up. And that would be number one. Okay. Number two is a probability that that doesn't happen. So we're gonna call this part over here B. And so that means that you're in this section over here and that's section number two. Section number three, meaning that you're in part of B, but not A. Oops, I got this backed up. Oh, well, they're labeled correctly, so we're okay. And then number four would be this area outside. Okay, so again, actually, let me grab a pen so I can make sure I label these correctly for y'all. So this would be A, this would be B in my setup. So again, the middle area, the, the overlap is where there's overlap between our two events. The other parts of the circles are going to be the events where only one thing happens. And then number four is everybody outside. Okay. Ah, over here is the general addition rule. This is going to get you pretty far, and I'm, we'll address a couple of things here. First of all, the probability of A or B happening is equal to the P of A, probability of A, plus the probability of B, minus the probability that both items happen. So this is like saying, remember, or is like saying, hey, what do you want for dinner tonight? And you'd say, I would take tacos or pizza. You don't care which one it is, just so long it's one of those groups. Or, you know, maybe you get a taco pizza and then both groups are not satisfied, right? Um, and so one or the other, and you're going to take over the over take off the overlap for that. Um, some people, and this isn't necessarily wrong, but is it's because when you've got event, you know, either a Venn diagram or a um, box or a two way table like this, they will actually just go through. And if I'm asking for A and B, they'll add one and two and three together. That's fine. However, there are going to be times where you're just going to have probabilities, and you're not going to be able to figure this out. And so you're going to have to find the separate parts that way. So this is going to be one of those things that you need to know. Um, and if A and B are mutually exclusive, that means that there is no overlap. So then that means that you can just, A, the overlap is zero, and then you just have this rule. Now, some of my students get very panicked. And I mean, you're given a lot of formulas on the AP Stats test. Some of my students panic about, oh my gosh, there's something else I need to know. And then they just actually, and literally will just memorize this one or use this one and then plug in a zero here. And the amount of stress that takes off instead of having to know two things when one would work is a fair amount. So that's something to consider too if you're one of those types of students. Now, in terms of the check your understanding, what's going on here is that there's a random sample of high school students who were surveyed regarding their toilet paper habits. Extremely appropriate given the last nine months. Um, should the toilet paper be pulled over the roll? Of course not to judge, or do they replace, and do they replace the roll when empty? I've got a couple of those people who definitely say no there in my house. Anyway, two-way table displays the data. Suppose that um, we choose members at random to find the events O is over and R is replaced, okay? So take a look at the two-way table, answer the questions while you have pause. I'll come back and you can check to see if you're right. Now, the first thing that I do when I have a problem like this, because oftentimes they will not give you totals for either the rows, the columns, or the totals. So that's going to be an important thing to do. Um, I usually do it in the beginning because if I try to do it in the middle of stuff, then you're, you're too busy worrying about, oh, I need to total this, and then you're losing track of what your, your process or your focus on the problem and back and forth. That's just a me thing. Um, explain in plain language what probability of O complement means and find the probability. So the probability of O complement is the probability of choosing a student who does not like the toilet paper pulling over. O is over, so O complement means everybody who is not a fan of pulling the toilet paper over. 
in general, it is best instead of saying, well, some people would say, hey, can I write that as they like the paper going under? You could. It is a better, safer option to just say it's students who do not like toilet paper pulling over. Okay. For all you know, they prefer to have all the sheets all broken up and it's in a stack. Okay. I'm just saying. So it's safer to just say it's not those people. Okay. So the probability of O complement is so it's everybody who's not in the paper rolling over. So that means it's a no for O. So that's 46 out of 116. That gives me just under 40%. Um, explain what P of O, P of O, R, 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 explain why P, probability of over or replacing the role is not equal to the probability of over plus the probability of replacing the O and then find what P of, P of O, or R, that's a, n -n 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 -n. <laughs> sorry, how professional, um, is now four things to be mutually exclusive. And this isn't always the case, but more often it is two sides of the same characteristic. Can you have it in two different characteristics? Yes, but there is definitely overlap here. And so that's the reason why this doesn't work. The events of the over the role and replace the role are not mutually exclusive because a student could belong to both groups. In fact, 58 of them do. And so for P of O of R, again, could you go through and go 12 plus the 58 plus 24? Yes. However, I would again recommend that you get used to doing the probability of O plus the probability of R minus their overlap because you're going to be doing this when we don't have this. And so again, the math isn't hard. You're working on the skill. So anyway, so you get about 81%, 94 out of six, 116. And then the last one, make a Venn diagram of this. So we've got our overs. We have our replacements. So 58, which I know looks like is kind of hard to read, my apologies. The overlap is in the middle. We have these 12 people who are on the toilet paper over, but they don't replace it. And then you've got people like my oldest who, actually my people like my oldest are here. No, he's gotten better, he's probably over here. He replaces it, but he likes it always under. So there's 24. Man, he's just tossing him under the bus, I know. And then everybody who, <laughs> who doesn't like it over and doesn't replace it. Is 22. Last question, write the event does not replace the role and prefers the toilet paper to pull over in symbolic form. So, does not replace. So this is your complement. So that's why I have R of C, or R to R of C, complement of R. And this is not R to the C power. It is the complement of R. Vocabulary, it's important. Um, it says and here, so you have an and, and then you have a toilet paper over. Boom. Now, one of the things that you will also find is that sometimes you will see in books, questions, etc., and we're probably going to cover this more later, but I'll go ahead and mention it now. So P of, let's say, and A and B, sometimes you will see as P of A intersect B, P of A or B is the union, which is a big U. And these symbols are actually bigger than like a capital letter, just so that it distinguishes itself from U. But union, you're bringing these two groups together. This is intersect, so where do the two overlap? But anyway, I throw that in for free. You don't have to worry about paying that. That's a little added bonus for being a repeat customer. So that is it for the general edition rule. We're going to start getting some more specific rules in the last two lessons here in Statsmatic. Um, again, check them out at statsmatic.com. I'm Mr. Hayes from Hayes' World of Math. If you have any questions, throw a comment down below, hit subscribe, hit like, hit the little bell, do all the things that you do on your gaming stations, and we'll see you in a few minutes.